चैप्टर में तकसीम की गई है जो चैप्टर मैं अब देखना चाहता हूँ ये है उम्र यानी मुला उम्र जो तलबान की हेड से और उसमा के बारे में चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेंटी वन उमर एंड उसमा
of Afghanistan, not least the United States, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. We helped create the Mujahideen, fired them with religious zeal in semin- seminaries, armed them, paid them, fed them, and sent them to jihad against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. We did not stop to think how we would divert them to productive life after the jihad was won. This mistake cost Afghanistan and Pakistan more dearly than any other country. Neither did the United States realize what a rich, educated person like Osama bin Laden might later do with the organization that we all had enabled him to establish was the United States did not even consider the rebuilding and the development of Afghanistan after the Soviets departed. America simply abandoned Afghanistan to its fate, ignoring the fact that a wretchedly poor and unstable country armed to the teeth with the most sophisticated weapon and torn apart from the world warlord could become an ideal heaven for terrorists. The United States also ignored what might happen to Pakistan now that the deadly drug heroin and had been introduced into our country and we were a wish with weapons of the most lethal kind, was America imposed sanction against the under the totally based Prisler Amendment passed in 1985, which banned military and economic assistance to Pakistan unless the President of the United States certified year by year that we did not possess a bomb. I cannot think of a better way of losing friends, but I believe our greatest Oversight was to forget that when you help to organize and use people fired by extraordinary religious or ideological zeal to achieve your objectives, you are most considered that they might be using you to achieve their objectives and are only temporarily on your side of a tactical reasons of their own. In Mullah Umar case, the objective was to gain power in Afghanistan. In the case of Osama bin Laden, it was perhaps to get help from America. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia to create Al-Qaeda, obtain funding and arm, and finally secure a base from which to operate. In such situations, 
who is using whom became murky we united states pakistan saudi arabia and all those who were allied with us in our jihad created our own French skin monsters. The Taliban were not a new post-Sumin phenomenon. They were taught by the same teachers in the same seminaries that had produced the Mujahideen. But now the level had changed. When we started with the Taliban, It was for good reason, first, that they would bring peace to Afghanistan by the bringing the world Lord to heal. Second, that the success of the Taliban would spell the defeat of the anti-Pakistan Northern Alliance. There was nothing wrong with our intentions except that we did not realize that once the Taliban had used us to get to power, we would lose influence with them. Mullah Muhammad Umar was born in the village of Kandahar Port Tridhari in 1959. He has four wives and four children, two sons and two daughters. One daughter was killed in August 1999 in a bomb blast. Mullahumar visited Pakistan for two weeks during the early part of the Afghan jihad against the Soviet. As an ordinary Mujahideen foot soldier during the jihad, he joined a couple of Mujahideen organizations one after the other. It is said that during a battle of one of his eyes was badly injured and that he removed it himself with a knife without anesthesia and sewed his eyelid up. But others say that he was treated in a hospital in Peshawar and the eye was surgically removed. Many people naturally tend to believe the first hairy question which has contributed to the legend of Mullah Umar. After the Soviet withdrawal in 18, 1989 and up to 1994, Mullah Umar became an Imam of Mosque in a small village of Kandal, west of Kandal. He saw the chaos that our son fell into after the capture of Kabul by Mujahideen in April 1992, with numerous warlords controlling different parts of the country. The public had little security from murder, rape, theft, and extortion. The Taliban movement began in 
Kandahar in June 1994. He took off quite abruptly, mainly owing to the lawlessness in the area. It was sparked by a single incident. Two young boys were abducted, viciously raped and killed by an Afghan gangster turned checkpoint commander and his associate outside Kandahar. The public already displayed naturally became agitated and started protesting violently. Mullah Umar and his small unknown band of Taliban refused to rush to the checkpoint, disarmed the violators and killed some of them. The Taliban were seen as protectors of the defenseless against the rapacious warlord and gangster officers. They then started cleaning up various areas, their fame spread rapidly. Followers joined up with, within Afghanistan and from certain seminaries in Pakistan, mainly in the northwest frontier province, Baltistan and Kirachi. Mullah Umar was appointed Amir, leader of the Taliban in October 1994. In 1996, a grand assembly, also called the Shura of 1500 religious scholars held in Kandahar, appointed him Amirul Mu'minin, our commander of the faithful. By that time, after a swift offensive, the Taliban were already occupying 90% of Afghanistan. The arrival of Taliban on the scene was spontaneous reaction to the chaos and lawlessness in Afghanistan and to the atrocities committed by former Mujahideen commanders, warlords, and gangster officials. Though this moment began to at home, the Pakistani government under Benazir Bhutu tried to take the credit for having created, raised, and launched it in the hope that the Taliban rapid military success would be to Pakistan political advantage. Benazir Bhutto, Interior Minister Major General Nasir Lababar, retired. Navy star started calling the Taliban my children. It was only later when the children became disobedient that when the government disowned them. The truth is that the Taliban did not ask for or receive any help from Pakistan in their earliest stages. 
The United States, I suspect, did not disapprove the Taliban. For the same reason that we did not, the American hoped that the Taliban could bring peace and stability to Afghanistan. The government of Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates, UAE, may even have helped the Taliban discreetly while their citizens help openly with donations. Because of the statement between the varying tribal functions, the Western power in general and the United States in particular welcomed the emergence of a third force, hoping for a return to same normality when they later became disillusioned, it was easy for them to dissociate themselves from the Taliban. Now, so far as the Taliban were all pursued from an area bordering Pakistan northwest, Frontier and British some provinces which also have an ethnic Pakhtun population. We have strong ethnic and family linkage with the Taliban. The opponent of the Taliban was the Northern Alliance composed of Tajiks, Uzbek and Hazara backed by Russia, India and Iran. How could any Pakistani government be favorably inclined towards the Northern Alliance? Any such inclination would have caused serious strife and internal security problem for Pakistan. We invited Mullah Umar to Pakistan a number of times after he gained power, but he always refused, citing wartime conditions in his country. We also offered to send him for Umrah. The Samal pilgrimage to Mecca, but he parried this offer too. He always met delegation from our intelligence agency, but never allowed any of his field commanders to interact with us. He said they were continuously involved in operations. Thus, our relations with the Taliban were never smooth. In fact, they were quite uncomfortable. We could only watch in the uh, horror as a Taliban unleash the worst abuse of human rights in Afghanistan. <coughs> Under the clock of <coughs> their own <coughs> peculiar interpretation of Islam. An interpretation that the majority of Muslim <coughs> reject 
and which gives a bad name to the great religion. One reaching players of Pakistan football team was arrested by Taliban government for wearing shorts during the game and their heads were shaved as punishment. The Taliban refused to allow women to step out of their house and homes, even to go to the market and refused to allow guns to attend school. They were infamous and torturing adulterers and murdering their enemies. One day log- logged up a number of Iranians in a shipping container, let them stay and suffocate and finally shut them with crushing coast through the walls of the container. Pakistan's first official interaction with Mullah Umar took place in the last week of <coughs> October 1994 at a place called Spin Bulldog on, pa- on the pakistan Afghanistan border. The purpose of first meeting was to seek safe passage for a Pakistani humanitarian and relief convoy. The meeting took place in an operations room during a battle against some Mujahideen commanders. Umar bluntly refused at it first because of the ongoing fighting along the route. But towards the end of the meeting he agreed he reluctantly the convoy was hijacked later but not by the Taliban. After Osama bin Laden arrived in Jalalabad in southern Afghanistan in May 1996, Arabs from various countries who had left after the Afghan Jihad started <coughs> returning there to join them. Returning there to join him. They already know him from the jihad days. They supported the fast growing Taliban movement too. Soon Uzbek, Bangladeshis, Chechen, Chinese, and Muslim from the South India, Europe, America, and even Australia started to arrive in a western to help the Taliban cause. <coughs> the Al Rashid Trust based in Pakistan was one of the main supporters of the Taliban movement and provided logistical and media help from Kirachi. On September 19 1998, our Director General of Inter-Service Intelligence and Prince Turki al faisal who was then the head of Saudi Intelligence and is now his country's ambassador to Washington, met with Mullah Umar in Kandahar. This meeting came to the 
wake of Al Qaeda bombing of US embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. The Prince informed Mullah Umar about Osama bin Laden's involvement in the bombing and shared information about his plans. Luckily, unearthed and filed to blow up the U.S. consulate in Jeddah. He reminded Umar that three months month earlier in June 1998, the Taliban had given a firm commitment to Saudi Arabia through the prince that they would expel Osama bin Laden from Afghanistan and hand him over to the Saudi Arabia. Yet they had done nothing. The prince also reminded Mullah Umar about Osama bin Laden promised to Taliban that he would not involve himself in any terrorist activities while he was in Afghanistan. This promise was belied by a press conference in Coast in 1998 at which Osama Bush said of inspiring people to commit terrorist act. Osama had also masterminded unrest in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, yet the Taliban still had not handed him over to Saudi Arabia as promised. Our Director General of Interior Service Intelligence also stressed to Mullah Umar that both Pakistan and Saudi Arabia had sincerely supported the jihad in Afghanistan against the Soviets. He said that his earnest advice to Mullah Umar was either to expel Osama from Afghanistan or hand him over to the government of his native country. The Director General also told Mullah Umar that Osama links inside Pakistan was a source of great concern. This waiting from Osama would facilitate recognition of the Taliban government by other countries. <coughs> Continue in, in second part.